these are the combination sites where you can have a an RV. There's a pickup with a bed camper that's been lifted off and tents. So these are pretty compact sites where you can put tents and our small RVs or vehicles in. Here's a Volvo pulling <laughs> pretty good sized trailer. Oh no, it's an RV. So they're squeezing two vehicles in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're up above the lower site. Nice little view here. There's the washroom. There's the washrooms, yeah. He didn't scrub his legs very hard. <laughs> oh, that's ink. Never mind. <laughs> Gotta hang that picture straight on the wall. It's nuts. So, there's the view down to the lower site. Let's go up to the yurt level. Yeah, yurt's L-Y. Rustic yurts. So this is where you drive in here. I'm assuming you can park your car there. You have to load and, and come down and park down here. It's like parking with a P here. So this is just like that one yurt down below. Reserve your guests on. So there's strip parking out here in front. All right. And there's a washroom up here at the end, I think. So there's an example of back to two different yurts. Walkways and so forth. The yurts do have heaters in them and electricity. And ventilation. And ventilation. So you can open up a vent at the top. You can open up some mesh windows like a tent might have. That building well, here, in front of us is not on the map. Is this the spa? No, I think the spa is oh, yeah, one more level. next level. They do have a, a spa on site, which is it's a third-party vendor that operates it. They have a, a grass roof on that building down below. A green a roof. Living. It's a green roof, yeah. So I think they share a washroom here with the tents. There's only one shower. Oh, okay. Facility. What's this symbol out here at the end? Lots of toilet. Just water. Oh, just water. Okay. Faucet. So there's one more level going up the hill? Just the spa. Let's just go up and see what we see since we're here. Yeah, these were the cars we saw parked along oh, the, yeah. the, the edge. So this, well, this is just general parking, not yeah. just for the spa. It's for well, it says right there, it says spa guest parking. Okay, so the spa must be popular. <laughs> she said it was what, $100? Entrance? Yeah, and you can spend all day or half a day there. Okay. Going between the the sauna, the whirlpool, probably a water feature. No swimming, but a water feature. Yeah, it's kind of a, a meditative atmosphere. Yeah. No cell phones allowed. And no children. No children allowed. It's kind of a zen thing. So we can turn around down here at the end. Yeah, they got a roundabout. Scandinave Spa. Scandinavian Spa, I guess. And like we said, it's operated by a third party. Okay. All right. This is the uh, upper RV site. It's actually closed off, so we walked in. Uh, this time of year, they probably have it closed because they don't really need it. These sites aren't full service. They have electric and water, but no sewage. However, there is a dump station back there at the parking lot. Oh, way down there where you see, well, down there, there's a stop sign way out there. This also has two yurts uh, adjoining it, so there's probably parking for the yurts nearby. There's a nice restroom facility. By the way, the restrooms here that we've looked at, spotless, very well kept, nice shower units, very nice restrooms, and 
There's a big lodge down there at the office, three stories of accommodations. That's just for staff, which tells me they have a lot of staff. So it's probably a well-attended, well-maintained facility, which it looks like it is from what we've seen so far. In the middle of a forest. So this is up higher, it's about as high as the other ones we saw with the view. Just doesn't have a view because there's so darn many trees in the way. Not that there's anything wrong with that. So we're still in the upper site. These are RV sites with electric and water only, no sewer. So there's a dump station. Here's the restroom building. As you enter, that's sort of the entrance there. So if your site is cleared out the other end, you know, like 10, 12 sites away, it's a bit of a walk, but not too bad. So there's the entrance to the upper site. They have it closed off. I think it's still in winter shut down for that area. So we're going to turn around here. This is the overflow parking for this or the yurts just up the hill or whatever. As you leave this parking area, over on the right, you see the, the dump site, since those sites behind us don't have sewage service. There's the dump station there with the water hose. All right, so let's go down the hill. Leave the camera running. bridge so they have a traffic light controlling it and we're green. Well they do have place for bikes and yeah, pedestrians fact, across yeah. the bridge. That's yeah. good. They filled in holes there and maybe had old guardrails that they expanded out to allow for. By the way this path crossing here this is a bike walking path that runs all through the Whistler area. Valley. <laughs> yeah. This is a small grouping of RV sites here. These are just back in spots. So these are for, well, they can handle some length, but you'd have to come in. And here's a small group of cabins, four cabins here. And we'll look at those in a minute over on the other side where there's another group and walk oh, through yeah. them. So does this go out? It does. doesn't go to the parking. Here. i got to come around. Okay. So, and I don't know if these have sewage. Yes, it does. I see sewer lines coming out of those. But they're there for smaller units. RV sites. Um, and something, walk over to the, the walk-in tenting. Yeah. So the video can kind of show, because I know Greg and Susie have concerns about overhead clearance, because they're very tall rig too. So This is the main entrance where you pull in and register. There's a registration office. Those other two stories are staff accommodations. Does look like they may have a restaurant there. We'll ask about that. It's a Thai food restaurant. Thai food, okay. Oh, the Barn open. Nork. Mm -hmm. All right. The cabins, just to your left. Yeah, we'll walk through those in a minute. But they're just, the cabins are just off the admin office. There's a row of cabins there. This first one nearest to us is wheelchair accessible. They have a ramp built up to it. I think it's the only one like that. Okay. Yeah. Playground. I must tilt it up a bit. There we go, because it matters what's up above us. 
Um, let's do the third aisle. So these first few rows are drive-through sites. They say they can handle up to 50 foot long rigs. So Greg and Susie's 40 footer should work oh, fine. Um, looks like overhead clearances. There's no overhanging branches so far. Let's see what it looks like here. Now there's a few overheads there, but the other aisle had none. Um, they're not too cramped. There's space between, not a lot, but nice trees and stuff. These are all full service with uh, sewer as well as water and electric. Some of these are 30 amp, some are 50 amp sites. And there's probably a dozen 50 amp sites in here. So pretty good coverage of whatever your needs are. And there's Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. They say it's probably not good enough for streaming Netflix, but it's adequate for other, most other Wi-Fi needs. Um, that goes down, there's like four or five more cross aisles. They do get a little shorter. But these are for the larger sites, full service. There's a putting course. So this is parking for cabins one to seven. So this is the back side of the main building office. This is one of the main public areas where you could spread out and have a gathering. And a fire pit. There's a fire pit. There's barbecues over there. They allow you to bring canopies. But there is no covered picnic shelter area. So it's all open to the sky. And there's the row of cabins that we saw from the other end. And I don't think we need to walk in there. Well, we're going to see if they'll let us peek in one of these and get an idea that what it's inside. So we've come over to where the parking is for the campsite. That high ground right in front of us is the bike path and walking path. So this access road is gravel and then here's the parking. And there's no cars parked here. In fact, there's still some snow around, and here's the access in uh, with snow still. So I don't know if there's anybody back in the tent sites, but we're going to go back in and see what we see. So it looks pretty primitive. No, I see something back here. So there's some sites here that they're closed off. The, the trimming got a little overzealous and there's no privacy or shelter from wind. But back in here, this tree tunnel. So up ahead, there's a, a maintenance crew working off of a little vehicle, a little quad. Okay. Very nice in here. There's the creek that runs through Whistler Village and out towards the Fraser River way yonder. All right, so all these sites have, looks like a picnic table, a little, I'm not sure what these little cabinets are. Are they, yeah, they're bear proof trash. That's cool. Okay, they have fire rings. These are tipped up because they're not in use right now. Here's a little access road. There's a little potable water station. And warnings to be bear aware. Okay, they're cleaning up the, the leaves here. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Getting ready for summer, huh? Yeah, getting there. 
<laughs> is is this a walking access over to the RV site here? Or? Yeah, so if you just stay on this and then go right up that walkway there. Okay. Across, it's just over that hill there. Okay. But there's really no parking there. So the only parking is out where I just came from? Or tenting? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know there is. There's like a playground. Did you see? Oh, by the main office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that playground there, there's like a huge car park. And okay. And that's like a tenting as well. So you kind of have to pack your gear in away from the parking lot. Yeah, we, we just... usually have uh, wheelbarrows so you can bring your stuff in. Got just it. Don't have okay. Them out yet. Thanks, because I have to carry a heavy duty deep cell battery to run my sleeping device. Oh, uh, yeah. I so, think we're getting the wheelbarrows out, I think, today or tomorrow. So. I also bring a little wagon along, too, to carry yeah. stuff, so that's handy. But yeah, they should be out soon. All right. And these are very nice little sites. Yeah, I just got a bit of, a bit of yeah. to Yeah, nobody up. in here right now, huh? No, nah, no one at the moment. Okay. All right. Oh, Carry on. Thanks. Um, there's some pathway lighting. That's good. More water stations. So, um, you see your neighbors, but, uh, and you probably hear them. Let's go down this little access road. Yeah, if this weren't a private side, I'd go, oh, bring my Jeep, my Bronco in here. Let's go for a drive through the creek. Anyway, that's the creek that comes. Whistler Village is upstream about a couple kilometers. And there it is heading off into the sunset. With the snow-capped mountains beyond, which won't be snow-capped in the summer. <laughs> okay. So something I didn't point out, there is a playground right there ahead. This open area, the grass is not particularly green right this time of year. Volleyball or badminton? Yeah, sand volleyball. Um, and just a big grassy area with some cabins over on the other side. So these are the two big common areas, this one and the one we mentioned over behind the office area.